we are today talking about management it's completely it's basically about preventing problem behaviors so before we move ahead we'll quickly learn about how dogs learn right so we know dogs learn through associations and dogs learn through consequences so association whatever the consequence is if you see the behavior increasing post that that is a reward and if after any consequence you see the behavior decreasing or stopping or extincting that is a punishment so this is basically how dogs usually learn how do we modify their behavior so this is the next step here rephrasing the issue what actually is happening and what do you want instead so you need to be very clear about it. i do not want my dog to stop from doing something no is not a behavior no yelling no stop what do you want your dog to do instead focus on that instead and teach that second step is management can you have your dog on a leash or maybe if you can greet your guest outside the house so he is not pumped up pumped that enough so he doesn't get a chance to jump or maybe if he's on a leash or if he's in a crate or if he is in another room while the guest is just entering so you stop the rehearsal of that jumping behavior third third most important point here is that you train the behavior desired behavior that you want instead and you train that when you don't need it right train it when you don't need it you train it beforehand and then you practice 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 and then when an actual guest comes you reinforce what you want management is basically changing the environment around the dog to decrease the likelihood of that behavior happening this is about management is about preventing a problem behavior from occurring it does not address the underlying reason of why it is happening but prevents the rehearsal you will have to stop putting your dog into those situations until and unless you haven't taught your dog what to do instead moving on to the behavior issues that we'll be discussing today barking out of windows barking on walks chewing nipping begging for food counter sniffing jumping on guests upon arrival and general behavior around them so this is a general this is this is like a basic thing for us barking out of windows gates and balconies so okay there's another aspect of behavior so there is a three term contingency a b c antecedent behavior and consequence behavior is whatever your dog is doing consequence is what is happening just after the consequence and antecedent is the setting the environment right. so first is restricting visual access can you block the windows can you use window films can you use those uh, jo hum green houses mein jo green glasses lagate hain green sheets lagate hain can you put those like put visual barriers you do not allow your dog to look at those so stress stress is same for everybody it increases our cortisol levels a cortisol levels go up your dog is not in the in the thinking state he is in the reacting state so for humans it takes about 6 to 8 hours for cortisol levels to come down but for dogs it takes about 72 hours to come to get those cortisol levels get down hence it's important for your dog to decompress so can you distract them with a pong or a chew toy dog hears things i mean if there is a gaadi wala ghar aaya kachra uthane wala something i mean my dogs were like very hysterical every time they listen to that tone so can you use tv noise to reduce the outside distraction right next is while on walks this is a huge one this is a huge if you're not ready with your tools if you do not have an idea of how do you want your dog to stop doing that prevent the rehearsal you do not want your dog to continue making those associations that every time he spots a dog he has to bark don't please don't give them that repetition can you check can you hide behind cars can you change your routes can you go in other alleys where you wouldn't find or you wouldn't get across any other dog or person anything else maybe if you can change your walk routes you can change your lanes you can change your walk timings right low traffic hours anything next is you can have something like a pong hand like we showed you what a pong looks like you can make a pong out of your hand so this has a narrow opening and this has a wider opening and you can have food inside and you can you can just lower your dog walking towards your side and this slowly dispersing food at your at your end at your knee level so your dog is engaged on this hand and doesn't dis, dis 
engage or orient towards the other dog. So chewing is a natural need for dogs. I mean, everybody knows that. If you have puppies, especially puppies, can you also, I mean, this is, this is a general rule. If you have puppies around, too much freedom too soon can be very harming. Also, can you, every waking hour of your puppy should be actively supervised. If not, can you tether them to a leash? Can you put them in a playpen? Can you crate them? Or can you put them in a room? Making sure that you have, they have something else to engage to. And that should be a stuffed gong or something else. Right. So you will have to give your dog appropriate chewing outlets, maybe stubbed comb, uh, raw dehydrated bones, frozen carrots, anything frozen. I mean, that also serves their purpose of their gums. Next is nipping. A lot of nipping happens because uh, nipping has a lot of reasons. They can, there are several reasons why a puppy nips bad. So first, first reason is because we play with, a lot, with a, a lot of our hands reaching for their mouth. And now the dog just knows, okay, it's fine. I mean, there's something coming towards my mouth. And because we tend to put our mouth, to put our hands in their mouth to play. I mean, I don't get the logic here, but then we do it sometimes. It's okay, but then can we stop doing that first? Okay. Next is, if is your dog hungry? Is your dog, does your dog want to be let out for maybe pee, potty routines? Is your dog trying to communicate something? Right, so this is an, another a need-based thing. Next is when your dog is over aroused, right? We tend to play for half an hour, I mean, non, non-stop half an hour breaks with our dogs. So this is something that is very harming for our dogs. This is not uh, tiring them out, but then this is just overstimulating our dogs. So now our dog is just excited, excited, excited and doesn't know how to stop or how to relax. Hence, we need to ensure that we have breaks every 10 minutes maybe for our puppies. 10 minutes a lot is a lot for puppies. Next is begging for food. So can you teach stationing? Stationing is something that serves a, a purpose in long run. I mean, can you put a place, can you put a mat uh, or an elevated bed and your dog knows how to go to that place because every good thing happens there. Can you ask your dog to get into another place, maybe, maybe his own bed while he enjoys his own stuffed Kong while you have your own meal? Next is there, there are something, there are some rules that I wanted to talk about tethering. I mean, whenever you think about tethering your dog, it shouldn't be for extended hours. I mean, it should never be about a dog thinking that, oh, I've now been punished and my dog and my person has left me. Dogs should always be having something of their, something on, something on their place, maybe a stuffed Kong or a bone or something else that the dog doesn't feel like, uh, dread about the whole situation or make bad associations with the place. Next is counter sniffing, counter surfing. So everything we leave as a fault, maybe on tabletops or maybe in the kitchen counters, can we, can we manage and can we stop leaving items out for our dogs to find? Because dogs are opportunistic scavengers. They keep on looking for food. Or maybe if you can block the access to the kitchen, can you leave, can you block the door? Can you put a baby gate or something? Or maybe can you can you place toys or stuffed toys or something on the kitchen, kitchen floor, kitchen floor? So the dog doesn't have to jump up. He has everything that he needs on the floor. He doesn't have the need to get up. Next is jumping on guests and inappropriate behavior around guests. So thanks to gravity, hang on. I mean, dogs are standing before jumping reinforce that you will have to be very good with your timing it's all about i mean training any any animal any animal is about the timing next is if you if you have a guest aligned if it is a planned visit what can you do can you dog your exercise can you get your dog to exercise well in advance so his energy levels are still managing and also have your dog on a leash can you prevent him from jumping is the question. Can you have treats in your hand while your dog is just standing? Can you have a high dispersal of treats? Yes, 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 yes. Can you get him to stand? He doesn't, if he doesn't get a chance to jump up. I mean, that is what he wants. He wants our attention maybe.